Hi guys, we're going to be looking at 12.1, that's on page 8, sorry, 863, and that's on line plots. So the real world link, it says that students in Mr. Cotter's class were asked how many after school activities they have. The responses are shown in the table. Step 1 says they use the data to complete the frequency table. So they give us this data and we want to just do our little tally marks. And remember tally marks are just like the little tags there. You know you guys have seen me use them plenty of times in class for scoring points. So go ahead and transfer that information and pause the video now. Alright and so here's what I have that for zero there are two, for one there are six, for two there are four, for three there are three, and for four there is one. And I just kind of went along the line to keep track of it, um, but you could have, you know, just picked out all the zeros and counted all the ones and that kind of thing. It's up to you how you want to do that. Step two says turn the table so the number of activities is along the bottom of the number line. Instead of the tally marks, let's place X's above the number line. The X's for zero and the activities have been placed for you. And so for one, we would do... Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. And for two, we would do our four. One, two, three, four. And really, they should be lined up with the other ones. Um, but I can't write that small. And then one, two, three, and then just one. And so the data now represents a line plot. Okay, so now it's represented in a line plot. So we've got our x's and our um, values here. Now remember that on a line plot, we aren't going to skip any numbers. Even if we have zero of them, we're still going to include all our numbers in order on the number line. There's no skipping over. Like if there were a zero for one, we wouldn't do zero, two, three, four. We'd still have zero, one, two, three, and then we'd go from there. All right, making a line plot. One way to give a picture of data to give a picture of the data is to make a line plot. A line plot is a visual display of distribution of data values where each data value is shown as a dot or other mark, usually an X, above a number line. A, plot, a line plot is also known as a dot plot. So example number one, Jasmine asked her class how many pets they had. The results are shown in the table. Make a line plot of the data, then describe the data represented in the graph. So. Um, so in this case, we're going to, again, draw and label a number line and, um, and then place those X's above each one. So they've already done it for you. You don't have to use this number line. Um, you can make one yourself if you'd like to um, and do dots instead if you'd like, whatever works. So it says to place as many X's above each number as there are responses in that number. Include the title. Oh, include a title. So it's really important that we take the title from our... A survey or whatever it is and we transfer it on to our line plot as well and so 0 1 2 3 and 4 represents the number of pets there were um, four people in her class that did not have any pets there are six people that had one pet there are eight people that have two pets four people with three pets and two people with four pets so it says describe the data there's 24 students because if you count how many numbers there are and this is going to be a big writing tool part right here, guys. You can't get around it. If you're describing something, you've got to write in a sentence. Um, so we have 24 students responded to the question. No one has more than four pets, so we only went to four on our number line. Four students have no pets. The response given, is, given most is two pets. Um, this represents the mode because most people said that they had two. So we're going to do this again for A. It says Javier asked the members of his 4-H club how many projects they were taking. It says the, result are sh the results are shown in the table. Make a line plot of the data, then describe the data in the graph. So first thing we do is line plot. So I want you to go ahead and fill in your line plot with dots or X's. It's completely up to you, but try and line up your rows so it's easier to interpret the data. Okay? So pause the video now, please. So your line plot should look like mine. Um, so clearly, when we're describing the data, we need to say how many, um, oh, and you know what? This doesn't show the title on it. So you need to also title it, number of projects, okay? And so um, when we're describing it, 
to describe it, we're going to um, talk about how many people were surveyed. So, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. So, 15 members were surveyed. Um, no one had more than five projects. The mode was two projects. Only one person had zero. All right, so that's how I would write that out. You've got your 15 members, um, so it's talking about how much of the data there is, you talk about which one is the um, highest level, um, then you can say um, that the mode, the most often, the most popular one was uh, two projects, and that there was only one person that had zero. So analyzing the line plots, it says that you can describe a set of data using measures of center as well as measures of variability. The range of the data and any outliers are also useful in describing the data. So we're going to take it a step further. So in the example here, it says the line plot shows the prices of cowboy hats. It says find the median and mode of the data and then describe the data using them. So um, define the mode. Obviously, the mode's really easy because it's going to be the one with the most X's. So that's really great. So we can find the mode very easily. Um, the median, however, unless you want to write out the things, takes a little bit more concentration. Um, again, you can do the tag your it, tag your it kind of thing, and we can say, okay, we've got the smallest and the largest, the next smallest, the next 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 smallest, and then we've got two left. So we'd have to find the average of 40 and 45, which is 4250. So the median is 42 point, oops, and since this is money, it's money, so $42.50, and the mode appears to be $50. Sorry, my writing is awful. So it says um, find it and then describe the data using them. So once again, we want to talk about how many pieces were in our data. And so we make sure to represent, you know, that there are 16 hat prices in here in dollars that represent the line plot. The median is between the eighth and ninth pieces of data, which is that n plus one um, divided by two kind of situation. The two middle numbers shown in the line plot are 40 and 45, so the median is 4250. This means that half of the cowboy hats cost more than $42.50 and half cost less than $42.50. Because that's what the mode or the median is. It's the middle of the data. The number that appears most often is 50. So the mode of the data is 50. This means that more that more cowboy hats cost $50 than any other price. Great. So it says suppose the two sets of data have the same median but different ranges. What you what can you conclude about the sets? So what I would say about that is that um, if it's the median, that means it's a center digit, right? And so it just means that for however many we have, the center ends up being the same. Now, it could be that they have the same number in the center, or they could have the same other two values that will be added together. You know how when we, when we have two in the center, we're going to add them and divide by two? These two numbers would have, have to add up to the same number when we divide by two to get the same median for two different data sets. So it could be that they have any of these other values. The median doesn't matter. It doesn't care if there's an outlier on this side that's all the way over here as long as the middle values are the same as this one up here. So um, that's the hard thing about median is it doesn't necessarily tell you if there's an outlier or not. That's what range would tell you. So number three says find the range and any outliers of the data. Then describe the data using them. So... Um, when we go back to our, our picture here, talking about range, we take the biggest number and the smallest number and we subtract. And so in this case, we had a hat, just one, that was $75, and we had another one that was $30. So the, um, 
am I saying 75? Yeah, okay, 75 and 30. And so we would subtract those and the difference would be $45. That's our range, okay? So we've got prices ranging between 75 to $30. That's a $45 spread. It says the limits for the outlier are $12.50 and $72.50. So 75 is an outlier. So again, they took the... Um, you know, to find the outlier, to actually test that out and see what the outlier, the highest amount could be, you would take the um, quartiles and you would um, subtract them, quartile 1 and quartile 3, and then you would multiply that times 1.5. You can add that to quartile 1 and quartile 3, which they didn't show the work here, but you've learned how to do it, so it is something that you could prove if you wanted to work it out to just check. Um, but they're saying that the highest number that it could be for, for value without it being an outlier would be $72.50. And because um, 75 is higher than that is an outlier. But I think that if you just look at the data, doesn't it kind of make sense that 75 is an outlier? It's so far off the mark. But to guarantee it, to mathematically verify it, you would take the IQR times 1.5 and then add that to the Q3 and subtract it from Q1 to get your smallest and largest numbers. So B, it says the line plot shows the number of magazines each member of the student council sold. Find the median, mode, range, and any outliers of the data, then describe the data using them. So pause the video now. I'd like for you to do what it says. I'd like for you to describe the data. My description might be slightly different than yours, but it, the gist is, is that I want you to get in the practice of writing down what you're interpreting from the data. So please do that now. Pause the video. All right, so you should have that the mode was 20 magazines, and that's really the easiest thing to do, especially when you've got this beautiful line plot here giving you all the information. It's the highest one, okay? So it's pretty easy to say which one is which. Um, the median, I did the tag your it, tag your it, tag your it, tag your it, until I got to the middle two numbers, and the two middle values are both 20. So if you did 20 plus 20 divided by 2, you'd get 20. <laughs> um, so that's pretty self-explanatory. So then range, I'm going to take my biggest number minus my smallest number, and we get a range of 8 magazines. So everybody sold within 8 magazines of each other. And there are no outliers. There's not like one person that sold one. <laughs> so um, it's not like one person that sold 100. They pretty are you know, well put together. Um, so it says describe the d data using them. So um, I would say that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Uh, 14 students sold magazines. Most stu students sold 20 magazines because that was the mode. Or well, I would just say most students sold 20 magazines. The median is 20 magazines as well. And the range was... Eight magazines and there were no outliers. Number four, the line plot shows the amount James deposited in his savings account each month. Describe the data include measures of center and variability. So this time they want us to whip out the median and quartiles and interquartile range and really test out that, that outlier. So the line plot shows the amount James deposited in his savings account each month. So we've got it titled Amount Saved. And it went from $35 to $75 each month that he put in his savings account that he was depositing. Um, so when we add up the values, remember that we've got 35 three times. So you could do it as 35 times 3 and then add to 40 plus 45 times 2 which are in parentheses because I needed to make sure I do them first, and then 50 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so forth, times 5, and then plus 75, and then add all those together and divide by 12, and you get your mean as $46.67. Now the median we would find by doing our little tag, you're it, tag, you're it, so tag, whoops, tag, you're it, tag, you're it, tag, you're it, tag, you're it, oops, tag, you're it. And so in the middle are 45 and 50, so I would add those together and divide by 2, and I'd find my median of 47.50.
And then the mode, of course, easy to look at over here, is um, 50 because it's the one that has the most. And that's just really easy to see in these plots. So the majority of the data are close to the measures of center. So most people, you know, or most, most of the months, James deposited the same amount. Most of the time, it's around $50, okay? That's pretty pretty good measure of a center whenever three things line up with that, right? Your first three mean, median, and mode that we always do. Now, to check our um, ranges, we would take the biggest number minus the smallest, and that would end up being $40 is the range. So, you know, each month he saved within $40 of the, the other months. The inner quartile range is when you take quartile 3 and quartile 1 and subtract them and that came out to $12.50 and then you uh, multiply that by 1.5 and you add that to the quartiles and you end up being between $37.50 and $50 and so there is one outlier, which is 75. Sorry, that's not, they didn't figure out. I was thinking that they did figure out outlier for you and showed you the work, but of course they did not. So um, they're just saying that half of the data are between those two amounts. And then the outlier, it's really obvious that 75 is an outlier, but once again, you could do your um, your $12.50 times 1.5, then add that to 50 and subtract it from 37.50, and 75 would be outside the range still because the highest number would be 62.50 then. All right, so you're doing C. I'd like for you to um, describe the data, include all the measures of center and variability. So we're going to include mean, median, mode, as well as um, the quartiles and the inner quartile range and outliers. All right, so go ahead and pause the video now because you've got some work to do. All right, so I wanted to keep my work on here for just a moment. We've got um, mean, I added up all my numbers and then divided by 10 because there's 10 values and that ended up being $35. The mode was $25 because that's the one that showed up the most often. The median, when I did my tag year at tag year at, my two me me middle numbers ended up being 30. So of course it's going to end up being a median of 30. And um, now I'm going to move on. My range I think would be a good one because this is pretty spread out information here. The range shows 65 and 25, so that's going to be a range of $40. That's kind of a big spread for a sweater. Now I'm going to find those inner quartiles, um, or sorry, the quarter, quartile 1 and quartile 3, and then inner quartile and see if that 65 is an outlier, because it sure looks like it to me. Hold on just a second for me. I'll be right back. All right, so again, using what I've got here, which is a line plot, in my green, I decided to find my quartiles. I remember that if the, court, if the median falls between something, then I'm going to count the number right after it along with the other numbers beside it. So um, when I figured that out, there's one, two, one, two, three, four, five numbers after the median. And so when I'm doing my n plus one divided by two, it was five plus one divided by two, which is three. And so my third position would be in 25, my third position from over here from the other side would be 40. Now you could certainly put them in order from least to greatest and write it all, all them out, but I just went ahead and used my line plot. Um, again, maybe writing out would be a good idea since you most likely had to do that for mean anyway. Go ahead and put them in order from least to greatest already and then you have it all there to work with. So my quartile one was $25. My quartile three was $65. My inner quartile range was then $40. Oh, sorry, not $60. So let me, $60, no, 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 that's the, um, was $40. And so my inner quartile range was actually $15. So now taking the IQR, take my 15 times 1.5, you get $22.5, $20.50. And I add that to my two quartiles, or I added to one of my quartile, making it $62.50. People are coming in, don't just ignore it. $2.50 is my lowest. And so I have numbers between $2.50 and $62.50. And so $62.50 would be the highest, and $65 is then definitely the outlier. So outlier is a yes, and it is $65. Yay! All right, I'm going to go over a couple examples if you'd like to hang on with me. Otherwise, go ahead and... Um, you can stop the video now. See you in school.
Yeah. Otherwise, pause. All right, so if you're still with me here, we're going to be looking at this example where they give us the number of tornadoes. Um, I guess it's the number of tornadoes per year. So we're going to do our little X's on, or dots, whatever you choose to do, on our number line that they've given us. Pause the video now and go ahead and do that for me. All right, so what you should see here is that our um, mode would be zero. And um, if we were to find an outlier, I think it would be pretty obvious that six would be our outlier. Um, looking at this information, if I were to find my um, mean, it would be kind of easy to add because all of these are zero values. Um, but I'd have to continue using them in how many values I use to find the mean average. Um, so one of the things I would say is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, that there are 15 um, tornadoes <coughs> and it's been recorded, well I guess tornado has been recorded over 15 years is what this is talking about because if it's number per year, um, so 15 tornadoes per year or over a course of 15 years, how many tornadoes over the course of 15 years and then um, most of the time it's zero. Um, so, and you know, one time it was as high as six, but no more than six has been recorded in the last 15 years. Okay. Um, numbers 14 and 15, hopefully you're just finding these when you flip through the pages just past your, um, your class pages. It says copy and solve, describe the data in the line plots and show your work on a separate piece of paper and it wants you to uh, describe the data, include measures of center and variability and then round to the nearest tenth if necessary. I'm just going to do number four here um, and that will be the last example we'll go over. But they've given us the line plot. It shows that three um, have gotten zero hours watching TV and then we have five that have watched one hour of television. It looks like eight that have watched two hours another five that watch three hours of television, nobody watches four hours of television, and three people watch five hours of television. But I like that they include an example like this where the four is on there because you just skip over that on the number line, but you can't keep it off the number line. The number line has to be consistent. So um, when we're finding our measures of center, we're going to look at mean, median, and mode. So I want you to pause the video now and come up with your mean, median, and mode, and then we'll come back and go over more. All right, so you would have found that the mean was 2.125 hours, and that I got that just by adding up all my numbers, including my zeros. Um, zero plus zero plus zero, then like one plus one plus one plus one plus one. Or you could just say it's going to be one times five, um, and then you know, two times eight, and then three times five, and um, that way you'll be able to add faster instead of having to write them all out. Um, when I did my tag year it, tag year it, tag year it, I ended up with two in the middle there. And then my mode is obviously two because it's the highest one. Um, so it says um, we're also going to do our um, IQR and uh, quartiles one and two. So we'll go ahead and get that done now. So work on your quartiles and then your IQR as well. All right, so my quartiles, whenever I figured it out, I just would... I kept it as the um, line plot and I just wanted to figure out what position it would be so based on my median which was at um, between 12 and 13 here right at 12 and a half I was then able to figure out well that means that there's 12 values on the other side of my median and if I add one to that and divide by two it gets me six and a half so then when I count out from smallest to you know going larger I end up between a one and a one so I know that I'm going to be one for that. And then the same situation going from the other side, I would end up between two threes. So I know that my average would be three for my quartile three. Now my IQR is going to be two because I'm just going to do three minus one, which is two. Um, if I'm to see whether or not I have an outlier or not, because you know you, you see that the five is spread out from the other group, I would multiply by IQR by 1.5, and that would be three. And so I would say, okay, well, my... Um, Quartile one is three, so if I subtract or one, so if I subtract three, then I'm in the negatives. So my zeros are fine, and then if I add three to my quartile three, then I'm going to be at six, and so my fives are fine. So I do not have any outliers. So there are no outliers, and there is 24 pieces of data. So 24 people, 24 students were surveyed. 
Um, the mean, median, and mode all land around two, so that's a good center of um, measurement. And that the quartiles are one and three, and that the IQR is two, meaning that they're not very spread out. And there is no outlier. All right, guys, I will see you in school. Ask any questions when you get there. Bye.